Hi, I'm Gotham. I'm a product manager at Kytera, and today I'm going to show you a new feature called Thermal Comfort. It's a tool that helps you find and analyze spaces in your portfolio that are uncomfortable in terms of thermal comfort, so temperature and humidity. Now, of course, our sensors measure air quality in general, but temperature and humidity are things that people feel and react to. They often complain about spaces that are too hot or too cold. And this is a tool to help you identify those spaces. So the way it works is you can select any period of time that you want to analyze. I've got 90 days here dialed in. You can compare it with a previous period, in this case, also 90 days. So quarter over quarter, for example, you can set your operating hours that you want to focus on. You want to focus on the times most likely uh, your buildings and spaces are occupied. So I've already just made it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and 8 to 5 p.m. Set my units to Fahrenheit. Now, the comfort ranges are default to what ASHRAE recommends. So 70 to 77F as the comfort zone for temperature, 30 to 60% as the comfort zone for humidity. But you can change this as you see fit. And once you set your thresholds here, you'll get a basically a leaderboard of all the spaces in your portfolio that are uncomfortable. So the uncomfortable spaces table, and I'll show you uh, how many spaces in each building that are too hot, so above 25, too cold, too humid, or too dry. And so, uh, in this case, 16 spaces in the art museum are too dry, meaning they're below 30% for at least one hour of your operating hour range. So that is the criteria to become an uncomfortable space. You need to be outside of your comfort zone for at least one hour in this time frame, last 90 days, within these hours and days of the week. So that gives you a way to set the conditions for uh, servicing these problem spaces, these uncomfortable spaces. Next, uh, you'll get a leaderboard of, of spaces that are too hot or too cold. We're starting with temperature first here. So you'll get a leaderboard looking across the whole portfolio and it's already ranked for you from with the worst space first. And worst means the least amount of time comfortable. So we're looking at temperature here and this space Volga in the United Nations was comfortable only 13% of the time. And it's it's about the same as the previous 90 days. It's only 0.5% uh, 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 better or, or worse than the previous previous 90 days and 80% of the time it was too hot. So that's crazy bad, right? So um, the average in that room is 80 degrees and it got up to 84. So yeah, that's very much a problem space. I'm gonna, today I'm gonna just gonna look at the Katera headquarters. So I'm just gonna filter this, this leaderboard by the Katera HQ. The worst performing space in our headquarters is the support office on the first floor. It was uncomfortable 57% of the time. Sorry, it was comfortable 57% of the time. Uh, so a little more than half the time it was comfortable and it was too cool 5% of the time, too hot 37% of the time. This is in the last 90 days and this is 15% worse than the previous 90 days. So it's gotten worse. And you can see here the stats for this room. It's pretty warm. The average is 75, max 81. And if you select a row in this table, you can further analyze the space with some handy charts. The first chart here is a box and whisker chart, but it's normalized for an average day. So a 24 hour day and this, gives you a sense of the variability of temperature in the space. And right here, you can see that the variability is high, right? So at any hour of the day, it can vary from comfortable to too hot during the working hours 
And then even, uh, you know, in the middle of the night, <laughs> there's a, a wide range of temperatures here, like uh, almost uh, looks like more than 10 degrees here. So uh, the space is highly variable, meaning, you know, as a building operator, or building manager, you might want to look at the equipment, the heating and cooling equipment servicing the space, and maybe it's in need of an upgrade or replacement if this variability is too high. Typically, you would want to keep the vari variability uh, small and within the comfort zone during operating hours. So this might be an indication of, of equipment that needs upgrading. Or maybe there's no equipment at all, and maybe it is time to, to regulate temperature in that space. We also give you a heat map, uh, which is normalized by days of the week. And this is, if you have mechanical HVAC, you can you can discern the start and stop of your HVAC schedule because it's repetitive. Um, and here you can look for clues uh, for potential energy savings. Maybe the heating and cooling is coming on too early and coming on on the weekend. Um, and that would give you, this would give you an easy way to spot that pattern. Here, since our space uh, is does not have uh, mechanical ventilation. I don't really see a pattern here. It's warming up, of course, um, because there is heating, but uh, that might be floorboard heating. So there's no real discernible pattern here. Um, although it is warming up on the weekends, and if the office is empty on the weekends, then that that's an indication of of energy waste. Down below is the same thing except for humidity. So these are spaces that are, are too dry or too humid. And so if, again, if I just wanna focus on the headquarters, I can filter the list for headquarters and find the most uncomfortable space uh, in our headquarters. And well, look, they're all, <laughs> they're all completely uncomfortable. In terms of humidity, they, they are almost entirely too dry in the last 90 days. And this is not surprising, the office is in Western Canada where it is very dry in the winter. So uh, you can see the max humidity is only 30%. So um, here we only show you the box and whisker chart because it do uh, humidity doesn't vary that much. So it's harder to see patterns on space time, but the variability graph, you can see here compared to temperature that the box and whiskers are much, much smaller and um, very, very flat. So like for the winter, you know, basically this doesn't change. Depending on the climate and the geographic region you're in, you may not control for humidity. Obviously we do not. Um, but if you're say in the deep south of the United States where it is very humid, you may be dehumidifying the air. And so you would use this chart to look at the variability of humidity and also give an indication of how well you're controlling for humidity, how well you're managing it. So that's how you can use this tool. So I hope that helps. This is the thermal comfort tool. It's, it's uh, available now and we'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks.